Forgotten Seasons is a pretty long-winded Dwemer quest where you can get a bunch of Dwarven masks and a special helmet as well as a Dwarven mount. So I'm going to show you how to complete all of that. It's technically three quests rolled into one, but you are going to need to investigate a vanilla area first. Pretty much the runoff caves. That's where you need to go. You'll find the skeleton of the broken Dwarven horse and we'll be back with the right correct parts to repair him. You will face off against a bunch of dwarven creatures, obviously lots of machines, especially these ones that explode with lightning, plus brigands and some bandits too. When you get inside you'll find a little encampment with some tents and there should be a note to give you some clues, but I missed the note on my first little run here. A bunch of other various junk and I'm not going to concentrate too much on some of the miscellaneous stuff that you'll find. But keep following the path on the left hand side and eventually you'll come to a room with a ballista. Once you take care of him, go across the bridge and then just carry on following the path. It can be a bit daunting, there's multiple chambers and it's easy to get lost, so kind of stick to what I'm telling you. In the second chamber you'll go up against one of these guys or two. They do explode with that shot damage when you've actually hit them, so be careful for that. And look for the doorway, this is where you're going to open up and get some loot in the chest in by. Carry following the pathway through to the next chamber and you'll notice this one's got water and there's going to be a switch that we're aiming for. So go up the stairs to this side and then go ahead and pull the switch once I realise it's actually in the corner here. Now I'm doing this pretty briefly and like I said it's a lot to get through. I'm just expecting you to use your brains and go along the paths in the correct manner. But eventually you'll come to this part where you've got to activate the lever to this platform to get across. Guarding the other side is a Dwarven Centurion, so if you go quickly, get a lot of hits in, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Make sure you loot the body of this one, as it has got a key that will open up a few areas for you to make it a bit easier. Including, at the end of that corridor, another room filled with some loot. Keep following the path around, and eventually you'll make your way to this area here. You'll notice you can see through the gates here, there's some bandits, they're fighting off against some of these guys. Once you're taking care of them, keep on going down and eventually we're going to end up pretty much the opposite area from where we originally started out. But we need to activate a few more levers. So in a big room now, you can see we had that big walkway open up, go across the other side of the stairwell, go right around and just show you exactly what we need to do now. You can see down below, that's where we're going to be going in a second. We need to activate another one to fall down so we can get across to that doorway. So go downstairs all the way down and then right at the bottom here you should find another lever. Now the Dwarven Guardians are kind of optional, they don't really attack you unless you go and attack them, but I went in for the kill anyway to see if we get some resources. Then back up the stairs, across the drawbridge and through this big massive corridor until you get to this next area. Again we've got plenty of Dwarven little guards here to guard and eventually you'll go past a little bit of loot on the table and the floor. And there is going to be another switch on this pillar here that activates the stairwell all the way up. Climb the stairs, surprise another couple of mercenaries or bandits. Keep going along the corridor and you'll come to a door here. Open this one up and eventually it's going to take us to that big massive room on the right hand side. And that's where we're going to go. We do need to go to the left hand side as well but let's open this up first. Let's take care of this bandit. Then go ahead and pull the lever and this should now activate pretty much the way back once you've got there. So this will take you to the tents where you first were and I want to show you where to pick up the note now inside it that I missed the first time. It doesn't really give you any mission markers, in fact none of the mission markers really pop up, maybe because this first area was a vanilla cave. But head all the way back through and this time we're going to go to the right hand side and you'll come into this chamber. You'll start hearing some strange noises, pretty much there is a big bout of lightning and thunder being used and they're pretty much taking out all the mercenaries. If you head towards the noise, the stairway should pop up without you having to do any switches. Again, there's plenty of loot and bodies if you want to explore every nook and cranny. But remember, this is just a guide to show you the basics. Head up the stairway and then all the way through the door. Vardkan to gallery, and that's pretty much the beginning of the second stage. There's a little camp area again where you find some loot and potions, and there's basically four doorways leading to different seasons. So go ahead and read all the stuff there if you really want, like I said, stock up on some more potions and stuff. And make sure you read Elberon's journal, this will begin the next stage and actually the proper quest to go and get the rest of this stuff and the Forgotten Seasons complete. 
You'll also notice you pick up the Dwarven Crown. This, in combination with a bunch of the masks that we're going to get, is going to give you some bonus buffs and stats for health, stamina, or magic. But first, we need to disable each conduit of the season. Best advice is to also activate the Dwarven Horse and the other mission associated with finding the masks, and that way you won't miss out on any of the items. Although parts of the horse, you do have to kind of be close for them to actually pop up on the actual screen as a way marker. So we're going to be going to the summer one first. Inside you'll find a spider control rod and a lever to pull to get your spider. He can respawn so if you do lose one because there will be some enemies attacking or you accidentally throw him off into lava then don't worry you can go ahead and respawn another. There's always a note on a dead body just as you come into each one of these areas giving you a rough outline of what to expect. The mission markers again aren't really that big so yeah you have kind of got to pay attention but it basically you're directing them over these little glowing discs. I ain't gonna lie, this was probably the most tedious and boring of the lot, getting them to run all the way down and activate each one of these switches. And this dungeon is particularly long as well. When you've done that first one on the right, you can see you go on the left hand side, there's a bit of loot in that hole there, and we're gonna carry on and activate the second one now as well. So that would be disc number two finally done. It's time to head down the main chamber. And again, we've got three different directions and one of these veers off into different directions as well. But starting on the left, Go along, you'll see some flames shooting down and lava on either side, and then control your spider bot to come along. Now it does take damage when it goes through them flames, so you've got to be careful. And you can't heal them with any spells, not that I know of, to heal machinery. So if it does get too low, yeah, you'll have to respawn another one. Uh, when we've got back to this central chamber, we're going to go down the middle now. I'm just showing you there's a few Atronox on them pipes that I ended up taking care of. On this stage, when you go through, there will be some enemies that will spawn once you get the actual spider bots come a bit closer. So you're going to have to help defend him against some of these guys. But eventually, once you've done that, he'll make his way through. And yeah, you can activate the next one. Once that's done, we can go across these big massive pipes. You might want to explore, you find some more loot. We've got a bunch of different entrance ways, starting on the left hand side with the flame shooting down. We're going to get a spider bot to come along. As I said, he'll take a bit of damage. Unlike the other flame trap that shut itself off for a couple of seconds so you can run through, this one kind of doesn't. So you've got to stick to the edge as you go through, but you should be okay and activate the next one. Then it's back to the big main chamber. We're going to ignore the middle parts for now and instead we'll go on the opposite side. And again, there'll be some more enemies that will come through at spawn points in the middle here. So make sure you're protecting your spider bot properly. And you can go ahead and then activate the nearly final one, I do believe. So go and clear the way a little bit, get rid of the Atronox here as well, the flame ones. Remember they do explode when they're on the floor, so be careful for that. That would absolutely take out your spider bot. Run across the bridge and take out the other guardian. This one's pretty tough as well, so be careful. Once he's down, again, bring the spider bot all the way down and you finally got the last one. This will turn off this part of it and you can loot the chest and grab some of the items in there, including a wellstone. And that's it, you're done. As I said, I've sped through that because we've got a lot to go through, but that is the first summer dungeon complete. Little FYI, I might have mentioned it, I will do. That game crashed quite a bit when I was trying to get through these dungeons. It could be related to mods, possibly. But yeah, just a little FYI. And it did corrupt my sound for some reason when I went to uninstall some mods, just in case. So yeah, no more game sound for the rest of this mission. Apologies. So next is the Autumn Dungeon, which is just below. There's a bunch of foods growing in crops just outside the doorway, so you can replenish if you want, but you don't necessarily need to gather anything. Another note giving you a heads up what to expect. This time we're going to be gathering six unique crops. They're all different coloured, so make sure you've got six different coloured ones. Red, orange, white, off colour, as well as, I do believe, a green and a glowing blue one. Now, the guardians in here were significantly tougher. It was like someone ramped up a dial. You don't need to pay attention to any of these little signs. You just need to find all six of them. Three of them will be on one side and three will be on the other side of a bridge. Then you'll also find the dwarven horse parts while you're exploring around this area as well. In fact, you should find every single horse part in this big massive chamber, as well as the final room that opens up the last parts of the masks here. There's a huge waterway below you with nothing in it. I swam through, I couldn't find any loot, so correct me on that if I'm wrong. And on the left you can see there is a doorway, we're going to be going in there in a while too. 
Has to be said, this is a big giant area and there are lots of creatures. So I've got the cow of the grey fox which allows me to show any creatures nearby which is super super handy. You'll find some ruins and underneath the ruins is another one of the dwarven horse pieces. Make sure you collect the orange grass and then you find some pedestals just opposite that big massive waterway and the bridge and that will be the last part of the horse bar the head. And just show you there's literally nothing in the water I could see. I did jump down and have a little look, not even a little loot chest. Head over to that doorway that I mentioned that on one side towards the north and then this should take you through to the room to go and get the one of the masks. So there wasn't a summer mask but there is an autumn, winter and spring mask. It will be guarded by one of these guys and as I said there's probably quite a few of these that I may have missed out and told you guys but you would expect to face off against a bunch of these dwarven dudes. Flick the switch, pick up the autumn visage and that is stage one of the mask complete. Now if you head back to where you actually entered, you can see that's where we're going to get in the final horse piece. You've got these cups or activators, depositories, so you just need to put them all inside here, the different coloured ones that you collected. I actually missed out the first time on one of the colours, so I had to run back all over and find the colour that I was missing, which was the off-white one. You don't need loads and loads, it will carry on gathering unlimited amounts when you go and harvest them, but you only need to do it once to bring it over. And just to show you the off-white one that I did miss, it's by the ruins that are slightly tilted, I do believe on the far side of the dungeon. But once you've got that and you've added it to the depository, it'll open up the gate and you can get that horse piece and the final bits of loot and stuff. Also obviously shutting off the dungeon by clicking on the middle pedestal. The chest next to it also had a bunch of loot that was worth grabbing as well, so make sure you've got plenty of weight that you can carry, or a follower too. Now let's go back to the main chamber. So next up is Spring, and you can see there's a stairway there with a giant spider bot on it. We're not going there just yet, we'll avoid that for now. That's where we literally just explored, just give you a heads up, and then we've got the ice one. But this one is the spring, which we're going to do first. Again, you go into it, and we're going to be taking out all the spriggans. Now, basically, as you go through these dungeons, you will pretty much find a locked door. We'll get the key to that in a little while, but otherwise, just keep following the right-hand side, and eventually, you'll come to a bigger area. Now, you're meant to pick up also a dwarven little drone that's meant to help with poison and stuff, but it was glitched out. It wouldn't let me pick it up, so I couldn't actually utilize this so I don't think I've needed it that much but if you're struggling you may want to see if you can pick it up and use it I do believe it actually works and it'll basically run around with you combating any kind of poison gases that the spriggans will release they'll pretty much control in the roots so we've got to kill every single one to stop them controlling the roots and that's how we activate this one follow the corridor around and you come to this room here with a bear and obviously these guys and they do love to uh, make all creatures pretty much aggro on you there's nothing down below other than just a bit of loot i thought that's where i would need to go to go and grab something but nope just keep going across the bridge to the next stage following the corridor around and you come to another area with even more creatures the wolves got taken out pretty easily with my ash spell which i'm absolutely loving and one of the spriggans that you need to kill will be running atop the little stairway there. Once you've defeated him, you run and follow the path around again. Don't worry about these little side areas, just showing you that it's a bit confusing sometimes, but keep running down. We are going to be exploring below us eventually, but we've got to finish off these final ones here. So if you've been rushing through, you do need to make sure you pick up the key from the Blooming Spriggan Matron. That will access one of the doorways, and I'm going to show you in a second, that will open up the final doorway to one of the masks. And carry on through, and there should be a drop down to the conduit, and that turns it off. So you can leave right now, but obviously you might as well go and get the rest of their masks. So carry on going back down the corridor, and past where the body is, obviously, and you should eventually get to the doorway that was locked previously. Make your way through, it'll be another doorway, and you can pick up the Spring Visage Mask. So you can see now, we just need one more of the Mask of Winter, and we are pretty much done. And then also get rid of the Conduit Winter, complete. So there is a big cold ice area, and again, another note that you should read to give you an idea. We're going to be jumping in lots of water, and we're looking out for dead bodies, or live bodies, before they hit the floor that drop down. Pretty much follow the path all the way up. Jump across the ice areas here, and then you need to drop down into the water below. Once you've done that, don't worry too much, there's not like a load of loot, but you will need to go through the doorway and then up into this second corridor. 
Now pay attention, there'll be a pipe that is kind of falling onto the floor with a little bit of ice at the bottom of it. And obviously you still got to take out a few of the frosty dwarven spiders and stuff. Uh, run up it and you should be able to open the door. You don't need a key or anything. And you've got more water. Go in the water, swim down and you'll find an archway that leads you up to another ramp. And then this is going to take us to that final mask. You do need to go around the side and fight another centurion first. And there'll be another dead one on the other side. And there'll also be a switch that you need to activate to get into this little chamber. And there we go. That's the final mask. You don't have to worry about anything else. We can go and just take care of this dungeon completely and go and fight against the big baddie. And when you come out of the dungeon, obviously you just got to go back up the ramp once more, all the way to the top. And eventually you'll come to this section here where it's another drop down. Look how obviously you don't land on the actual ice itself and you should be okay. Swim again underneath the arch and you should get onto the ramp. And this is going to take you to another walkway that you're going to have to go up and over in a second. Once you've taken out a few ice waves. I have sped through this. I'm looking at it now feeling like I maybe could have been a bit more kind with some of the edits, but honestly, it took me about two hours to do all this. I did have a few breaks in between and I had a few issues loading one of the areas up. The spring one actually kept crashing on me, but you get the idea. Head all the way up the ramps and this is going to be the final one eventually when you get to the top. There's plenty of dwarven spiders though to look out and then down below you've got some more loot in the chest there and we're nearly there. We're nearly done whole ton of soul stones here as well up the ramp and you can turn off the winter conduit so you can jump off that area right there or head down don't go to the right though make sure you go up this way instead as i made that mistake and got myself lost for about 10 minutes remember the exit way is the exit way with the floor at the bottom rather than water so that's where you know to go just give you a little idea what the masks look like on their own which you can wear you get 25 points of either health Magicka or Stamina and an increase to either one-handed, two-handed attacks as well as maybe some heavy or light armor depending on which one you choose. And you can swap them out whenever you want. But you craft them basically with the Dwarven Crown and just a few bits of leather you can swap it out and in. Anyway, I'll show you that at the end. Let's carry on then. When you come out of this dungeon, you'll be attacked by basically Elberon's apprentice and a few other little thugs. Shouldn't be no problem. They haven't got any major loot to grab. And then head up the stairs and the spider will actually run away from you. And you go and face him off in his arena. Where hopefully we're going to earn a brand new book that gives us a bunch of buffs and stuff. As well as a new armor set. Well, I say armor set, it's literally just one piece for your actual main armor. But yeah, take him out. It's pretty powerful. Obviously, I'm pretty high leveled, so I imagine this would be quite harder normally. But the Sky Orchestra will pretty much spawn lots of Spriggans nearby. And so, yeah, you want to really be aiming for the Sky Orchestra rather than the Spriggans to get rid of them quickly. With the final hit, that will be this DLC creation club piece actually finished and as always there's lots of stuff in there but there's the water of the seasons fire resistance by 10 percent shock as well as frost resistance by 10 percent and poison resistance by 10 percent so not too bad then go to the little chamber next door to it and you will get the special book that i mentioned which is going to give you better prices when you go to buy stuff but only when you're wearing light armor and when it's raining your stamina will also regenerate 5% quicker when it's a clear day. If it's slightly grey and cloudy, you'll get 10% extra critical chance, 10% of the time with bows if you use it then. And if you've got a full set of heavy armour equipped, your armour increase rating by 10% when it's snowing. Very weird item indeed. And obviously you do get the horse, which I've just shown you that you just run up to the corpse of it and you repair it. And it looks pretty cool. I think it's a nice little one. I think some people are getting confused with this with the bone horse, unless there is a bone one that I've just not seen. Let me know. Now just head to a forge and you can go ahead and craft your dwarven crown of either autumn, spring or winter. As I said, you can wear the masks separately. They'll give you 25 points instead of 50. That's the only difference. That's pretty much what the crown does. It boosts it by an extra 25 points. Although the actual crown of winter only has 40 points worth of extra stamina when you do it. Also, if you're wearing the crown that you're trying to craft it with, sometimes it doesn't necessarily work. So if you're wondering where the dwarven crown's gone, because since you just crafted it, make sure you wasn't actually wearing one of the masks first. And it only just costs a little bit of leather. You're basically slotting the masks into the crown whenever you want, as long as you've got that bit of leather too. 
And yeah, use it to whatever build you got more. Are you aiming for health? Are you aiming for stamina? Or are you aiming for magic? Let me know in the comment section whether or not you like this quest. What do you think about the dwarven horse? And yeah, hope you're enjoying the rest of the content. And I'll see you right back for some more guides soon. Bye-bye.